What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my bow guide and build video for Monster Hunter Rise PC Edition. Now, back with the Switch launch of the game, I actually did do a bow build, but it was a physical bow build, and there were a couple things I didn't touch on at the time because I wasn't sure if they were intended or just glitches. But here we are with the PC launch, and things like animation cancel for power shot, and things like absurd hit zone values, and uh, damage calculations for elemental damage are all still in the game. Uh, and with these things being in the game, Bo has basically just climbed the ranks. It is one of the, uh, well, no, not one of, it's basically the fastest killing weapon in the game uh, in almost every speedrun category. It's capable of putting out just absolutely absurd amounts of damage, and in the right hands, it's an incredibly devastating weapon. Now, with all that being said, I think bow is an easy weapon to learn, but a hard weapon to master. Uh, there's definitely a lot of nuance to bow play that I think is lost on players that are first starting it. I know it was certainly lost on me when I first got used to it. And so, as opposed to just a normal build video, I really wanted to go in-depth into the bow and talk about all those things. So, first off, we're going to be talking about kind of the three tenets of bow gameplay. Moving on from there, we'll talk about some of the specifics and new combos and whatnot that bow is capable of. Then we're going to look at the high rank build that I'm using. We'll look at a starter high rank build. And lastly, we will do a hunt. So with all that being said, let's jump into it. And the first thing we're talking about are the three tenants of the bow. And this is stamina, bow type, and charge level. Uh, now, stamina is obviously incredibly important with bow because you're going to be using your stamina to put out all of your attacks as well as your power shots. And if you run out of stamina, you have this like awkward period where you're like, shit, I just need to run around. And you don't ever want that. If you run out of stamina, your dash dancing stops. If your dash dancing stops, your damage goes down. And so there's a couple different things that we can do to help mitigate that. The first, of course, is going to be stamina skills. And these are uh, obviously going to be more prevalent in late game. But things like constitution and stamina surge are incredibly important on the bow. More so even than your damage skills, things like weakness exploit, I would consider stamina to be more important than that. Now beyond that, there are a couple other things we can do to help with our stamina. Uh, very early on, we can start making dash juice. Dash juice is incredibly potent. And you'll see that little yellow square we have up at the top next to where it says waifu. Uh, dash juice is gonna just give us some absurd stamina regeneration. You can see how fast my stamina is regening uh, in between these power shots and whatnot. And Beyond using dash juice, there's a couple other ways we can also get that buff. One of the first is while we're running around, those little yellow butterflies that we see in the map, they will give us that buff. And then besides that, there's actually a palico skill that will also give us that buff. So if we go over to buddies, uh, right here, go fight win. You want to have a palico that has go fight win if you're playing with bow. Because between that and dash juice and the uh, little yellow butterflies, you are able to basically maintain that stamina buff. And it's going to make your life a whole lot easier, especially early on when you're not going to be loaded up on constitution and stamina surge. So keep in mind, stamina is going to be king here. There's ways to manage that and you want to take advantage of them. Moving on from there, as I mentioned, is going to be bow type. And with bow type is going to be positioning. Uh, now we have three main types of bows in Rise, and this is a big difference from World and Iceborne. We have rapid fire bows, pierce bows, and spread bows. Rapid fire bows work by shooting out increasing quantities of arrows, so two, three, four, four. In addition to that, our damage is going to go up. Uh, pierce bows are kind of like the sniper bow of the game. They're used from much farther back, and they're only going to shoot one arrow, but it's going to have increasingly higher levels of damage. Uh, spread bows are kind of like the shotgun of the game. They're going to be played very close up, and they're similar to rapid bows in that the amount of arrows you're shooting out is going to increase, uh, but you need to be in that close range, and it's also going to have a wider spread on your actual volley. So, all in all, I very, very much prefer rapid fire bows. I just really like the approach of, like, loosing multiple arrows. Uh, pierce bows, I actually like for certain targets, things like Narwa, but spread bows I just don't really use. Um... I mean, this is just my opinion. I think Pierce or I think rapid fire bows are just superior to spread bows. But if you really like spread, then hey, you know, have fun getting up in the target's face and playing with spread. Um, but anyway, the point being that your positioning is going to be determined based on the bow you're going to play. And in particular, this orange reticle, that's a good indicator. So right now we are in the ideal range. I'm going to be able to get my maximum damage. If I go too far back, though, you can see it changes to yellow. This range would be great for Pierce, but it's not going to be great for rapid. 
in a similar similar situation if i get too close it goes yellow again this would be a great range for spread but not for rapid so keep in mind your positioning is going to be dependent on the type of bow you use and not only from a, uh, a distance to the monster perspective but positioning in general with the bow is going to be incredibly important uh, probably one of the biggest strengths of bow is its ability to snipe weak points and kind of just dance around the monster avoiding damage you know, every time the monster charges, you're dashing out, you're getting a power shot, you're hitting that face, and positioning really is going to be king with the bow. Uh, I'd say, you know, more so than a lot of weapons, because keep in mind that with bow, we are squishier, we don't have as much defense as melee weapons, uh, and so dashing out of attacks while still maintaining uh, the ability to hit that target, whether it's going to be the head or the forelegs or whatever you're aiming at, that is going to be very important, and it's something that's going to take practice. The last thing I want to talk about is the charge levels. Now, charge levels over here, you can see we have four charge levels. You'll start with three, but once you get access to the Mighty Bow Feather and Bow Charge Plus, you will go up to four charge levels. Uh, and the actual arrows you're going to lose are going to depend on your bow. A max level Rampage Bow will do Rapid 2, Rapid 3, Rapid 4, Rapid 5. Now, just looking at these shots, you can see 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see that the damage is going to go up with each consecutive charge level. Getting up to 5, we got 107s popping up. Uh, now, that charge level will also go up from charging sidestep. But the thing is, ideally, we want to maintain our charge level to be at 4 and 5 pretty much as often as we possibly can. Uh, you know, that's where we're going to get the most damage. We don't really want to be dropping from that at all. And like I did right there, where I basically reset, you don't want to have that reset. You know, if you're going down and you're shooting at a level 1, you're just missing out on free damage. So you don't want that to happen. Now, on top of that, certain abilities are also going to take on the potential of our charge. If we're at a max charge and we shoot, and then we go into our power shot and power volley, those are going to be at a high level. If we try and do those too early, you can see the damage isn't going to be as high. Also, this is going to apply to our aerial aim. If we do our aerial aim while we are already charged up, you can see we're seeing 140s pop up. Whereas, if you do it when you're fresh... You know, the very last shot had some 140s, but basically what's happening is we are having to charge up going into aerial aim versus doing aerial aim already charged. So always keep in mind your charge level when you're shooting. I'm almost never going to start with a shot. I'm always going to dash before I do a first shot. And then from there, I'll consider going into damage. If you really want to min-max, going into two charges will actually put you straight up into four and five. But, you know, as you can see, that's going to be a lot more costly on stamina. So keep that in mind. Now, moving on from that, uh, now that we covered those three things, let's talk more about the combat of the bow and some intricacies. So we've already kind of been talking about charge level and how you always want to start off with at least one dash, two if you can afford the stamina. Uh, but taking a look at our charge level and our shots, you can see two distinct things, both the color of the bow as well as the animation. You can see when our hand goes all the way back, that indicates we're at a max level. And our hand's going back twice because we have bow charge plus, Typically, it would end right there, and after that, we would be back down to a normal one-shot. But that is kind of the cue you want to look for, is that and the color of the bow. Now it's red, 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 orange, white. Well, I guess white, yellow, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you want to look for that indication. You know, when the bow hits that, that white and yellow, that's when you want to go into your power shots. That's when you want to go into your, your aerial aim or your dragon piercer. We're actually never going to use dragon piercer. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but keep in mind that that's, that's what you want. Either the animation of your hand going all the way back or the bow having that yellowish white glow. That means that you are in big dick damage mode. And that's where you want to stay. Uh, so to get that, obviously, you know, doing a couple dashes is going to be great. And the thing is, once we have already hit that level, you can see we're maintaining that. Even though we're just dash dancing back and forth, we're maintaining that level 5 charge. And we can just keep going into it. Um, so that's that's going to be one of the big things here with bow, is once your charge level is up, maintain that charge level. You know, after your power volley, you can do it again. Uh, and you can just keep dashing. So your dashes, well, just to, just to break it down, uh, you can keep charging sidestep. You can also charging sidestep, power shot, power volley, and then do it again. What I'm talking about is this. So if we go, well, let me just build it up. So we get up, we can go power shot, power volley. We can dash, shot, power shot, power volley. We can dash, well, I ran out of stamina there, but you get the idea. You can basically do a shot, 
shot volley or, or, or a, uh, a regular shot a power shot and then a power volley and then you're gonna dash and do the same thing so just hitting those three moves that's gonna be kind of your maximum damage and if you have wire bugs you're gonna want to add in aerial aim after the power volley pretty much any time you have it available because of the damage that's capable of now on the note of dragon piercer honestly dragon piercer just isn't that good in this game uh, taking a look at the damage dragon piercer is capable of even fully charged up we did 1238 there now by comparison we're gonna let that reset and we're gonna do an aerial volley Sixteen eighty-two, going through the aerial volley and then following it up with the diving melee attack. So, honestly, what it comes down to is just you don't really want to do Dragon Piercer. I know Dragon Piercer was fun in the world, and it's still a cool skill, but it's just that the time the ability takes for the amount of damage you're getting, it really doesn't make it worth it when you could just do an aerial aim. Uh, you know, if the monster is down in a mountable state. Uh, or I want to wake it up, I might use a Dragon Piercer, just because I know I'm going to get a lot of hits out of it, whereas Aerial Volley is going to be three separate hits. Uh, but beyond that, I'll, I'll almost never use Dragon Piercer with the bow. Um, so now that we have, let's see, we've gone through kind of our basic combos. Uh, we've gone through, oh yeah, our Aerial Dive, which I talked about that briefly, but after, after you use the aim, hit either the Y button or triangle or whatever you want to call it, uh, the top button on your controller and you're going to come down and dive with a melee attack and that's actually super nice because a lot of times you know when you do your silk bug attack this is going to put the monster into a mount state and then that diving attack will actually do the mount action for you so it's very very slick kind of just seamless in terms of how it flows into the gameplay a really big fan of doing that um, so besides that now we're going to talk about the animation cancel now if i just go through my rotation and then i go into a power volley you can see it took a little bit of time. Uh, by comparison, if I charge and then do it, you can see how the power shot's coming out just a little bit faster, maybe about half a second faster. Uh, basically, what is happening here is after you have done a charging sidestep and then you shoot, if you go immediately into an absolute power shot, you're actually like cutting off part of the animation. And so you're getting that absolute power shot out faster than you would by just doing a, you know, a normal power shot from, uh, from just rotating through your combo. So ideally, you always want to try and get that power shot after a dash shoot just because you're going to get that animation that goes out faster. And that's going to allow you to really rack up a lot of damage very, very fast. So I believe trying to think i should have made a list before this video but i think that covers uh pretty much everything that i wanted to cover in terms of the combat intricacies with bow obviously you know you're able to just do insane amounts of damage by rotating these combos so let's go on over take a look at the gear and the build and uh you know we'll move on from there so uh, I have five primary bow builds. Uh, the only difference between them is going to be the element, and it's going to be the same for pretty much every single bow. First off, we have the Rampage bow. Uh, with Rapid, you're going to want Attack Boost 4, your element at level 3, Firing Rapid, Power Coating, Exhaust Coating, which adds 10 additional raw to the weapon, and then Arc Shot, you're not really going to use. I didn't talk about Arc Shot, but Arc Shots have changed from how they are in World and Iceborne. Uh, when you do Arc Shots now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put up this little thing, and instead of dropping coconuts down that can hurt the monster, it's going to drop out this little buff. And you can either get like a brace buff, a little bit of healing, or some affinity. But the thing is, the buff doesn't last that long. And it's kind of awkward because, you know, you'd be like shooting and then you got you want to like arc shot like above yourself and then kind of dash into it. I almost never use it. It's just, it, it's awkward to work into the combat flow and it doesn't hurt the monster. So it's a waste of time in my opinion. Uh, but to go back... Uh, basically, the point was your arc shot doesn't really matter here. The big thing is attack boost 4, element 3, firing rapid, power, and exhaust. Moving on from there, mighty bow feather. Now, this is a high rank only thing. You, After you have beat uh, Baryoth in the hub high rank and Rajang in the hub high rank, you then can fight them again in the arena and get the tokens you need from killing them in the arena. This is arguably the most important thing for bow builds. You absolutely do not want to play without bow charge plus. Moving on from there, we're going to go for uh, Vike Mail, Vike Braces, and Chrome Metal Coil with Rapid Fire Builds. The Mail and the Chrome Metal Coil we're using for the Deco slots. The Braces we're using because they have two points of Rapid Up, which is one of the best skills we're going to have for a Rapid Fire Bow. 
The last piece are going to be Rachna Greaves, which come with a one deco slot, but two constitution, two stamina surge. So just absolutely insane value piece for using the bow. Really can't stress enough how good that is. As for the Petalace, Demon Petalace 3 is going to be fine here. Um, I think there's like a Demon Petalace 4 you get later. Either way, Demon Petalace is what you want. And then for your Talisman, ideally, you're going to want two constitution, two slot, one slot, one slot. Now, I managed to get a 2 const 2-1 two with two free points of flinch free, which isn't terrible. Uh, but ideally, I would have preferred a extra level 1 deco slot over having flinch free because you're never really close enough to get tripped with the bow. Um, but yeah, your, your stamina, you absolutely want to have your constitution and some stamina surge coming from your talisman. Uh, just getting getting this, what I have right here, along with the rachna, that'll put you at 4 const 3 stamina surge, which is incredibly comfy. Like... You're just dash dancing for days, uh, having that amount of stamina management. Now, moving on from there, uh, to talk about the decorations in particular. So, with the Vike Mail, we're going to put our four shot jewel. This will bring us up to Rapid 3. Uh, we're also going to have our Tenderizer there and Tenderizers here to give us weakness exploit. Our level one slots are going to be occupied by Dragon Jewels or Quick Load Jewels. Now, this is going to be a little bit of preference. Uh, in particular, I prefer to have Dragon 5. This build is, by the way, based on like the meta bow build. This is like a mathematical build that folks in the community, much better than myself, came up with. Uh, and they actually typically go for reload speed level 2, which is why I said if you have a 2 const 2 one, one, I could have Dragon Attack 5 and reload speed level 2. Uh, but in my case, I'll just take Reload Speed 1, and I'll put my Elemental Attack up to 5. Uh, it's really going to be down to preference, to be honest. Like, with your Quick Load, uh, you know, having level 1, you just you do that animation a little bit faster. If you have level 2, just going up and down automatically switches between your coatings, almost like how uh, bow guns work, switching with ammo. So, it's going to be user preference because my bows only have power, exhaust, and close range. I'm not that worried about having to do that animation twice in combat, so... I'm fine with having level 1 there, uh, and then instead focusing on getting my, my elemental damage up higher. So, moving on from this, let's talk about the Pierce build. Now, the Pierce build is going to be very similar with one piece that gets changed. And we pick up the Hirototo's fan braces, uh, mainly because we don't need the wrap it up, and instead we can work Pierce decos into this. So, almost the same exact thing here. Pierce Tenderizer Dragon, Pierce Tender Dragon, Pierce Tender Dragon. Uh, and as you can see, functionally, it's the exact same build as before. We have Elemental Attack uh, at 5, Constitution at 4, Wex 3, Stamina Search 3, Pierce Up, Flinch Free, Bow Charge Plus. Uh, on targets that don't have good tenderizing hit zones, which is pretty common with Pierce, instead of Weakness Exploit, you should go for uh, either Peak Performance or Attack Boost. Uh, I literally only use this set to fight things like Narwa or Abushi, so... They have huge, huge hit zones, so Weakness Exploit works fine on them. Uh, but otherwise, for a lot of monsters, you're, you know, Weakness Exploit is probably only going to really work when you're attacking the head. Uh, and then if you want to play a spread bow, the biggest damage, to, or the, the difference here is it's almost identical to this, but you're going to use the Rockna Chest and the Rockna Waist as well, because those have uh, some spread up abilities on them, as well as decent slots, so they work great for spread. Uh, but besides that, the builds are very simple to put together, a little bit decoration heavy, uh, but other than that, bow is, is definitely kind of an easy weapon to run with. Uh, moving on from gear, let's talk about the switch skills. First up, Absolute Power Shot versus Power Shot. Now this is going to come down to your preference early on in the game. I actually think Power Shot is a little bit better. Uh, mainly because Absolute Power Shot, it gives us the potential to stun, which for if you're not sure what we're talking about, let me just get over here. So when we do our Power Shot, uh, you can see the little, see the little the, the stun sparklies on the monster. That's generating KO, but absolute power shot and power volley are going to cost more stamina. So while I think they are really good skills and I think it's worth using, I also think it's important that you're like at this level. By having Constitution four and stamina search three and then dash juice on top of it, the stamina increase from absolute power shot isn't going to be a concern. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, but early on in the game, when you're not loaded up with those skills, I think power shot is going to be your better bet. Uh, now you get this one. This is actually from the uh, late game quest that you get. So uh, late and high rank, you'll get a bow quest that you can do to unlock that. Uh, moving on from there, charging sidestep or dodgeball. I really prefer charging sidestep. Dodgeball will give you a charge after a near miss, so you could like jump straight from one up to level three. But the dodge range is super small. I mean, if we're standing right here at the river, you know, we're not even making it all the way across the river with that dodge. Uh, 
for for spread bow i think it's decent because you're already going to be in melee range and you do get a free melee attack every time you dash with dodge bolt uh, but otherwise you know my focus is dodging and as you can see i made it all the way across the bank uh dodging with charging sidestep and so with with using dodge bolt i feel you really have to have evade extender in your kit as well which just you know it kind of it makes things a little bit more difficult so personally i prefer charging sidestep i'm just a lot more comfortable with it uh, as for aerial aim versus focus shot aerial aim is king here like there's there's no question yeah you can play with this at the start uh, but as soon as you unlock aerial aim you're going to want to use it now uh, charging sidestep or dodge bolt this is from the lower rank quest i think you get this as soon as you hit like was it hunter rank three maybe or even lower than that uh whereas getting aerial aim this is from crafting bows it should be eight different bows or uh, a combination of bows and upgrades to unlock aerial aim so you know making your bows will get you this and then you can really start dumping out the damage uh, but that's what i would suggest absolute charging and aerial aim absolute only when you're in late game when you have lots of stamina so I believe that covers all the build nuances. Let me jump over. Uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, talk about a starter set. So we're going to go over to the hub prep area. Uh, now this is a starter high rank set. As for low rank, I mean, just use whatever. It's low rank. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but once you get into high rank, there's actually a very nice set you can put together uh, relatively early. And those three pieces in particular are going to be Spio. Actually, no, Spio, yeah, never mind. The Ombal Drawn Plate is uh, low rank. So, yeah, Spio is going to be great. Gives us two points of wax. So, pick that on up. Uh, after that, Izuki Braces. This is going to give us two points of constitution. And then, as soon as we hit HR2, we are able to fight Tetranodon and pick up uh, normal up there, normal up there, and normal up on his legs. So, just running those three pieces is, is actually pretty nice. It's going to give you uh, normal wrap it up level three, constitution level two, wax level two and you get a free point of evade extender. By that point, you can make a talisman, so your constitution will actually be at level three. Uh, but that is basically what I would suggest using for most of your boat gameplay through high rank. Uh, as you get a little bit higher into the game, there's a couple other pieces that you can work in. Uh, the Puke chest, for example, has two points constitution, so you could go for that. But of course, you're gonna be losing out on, uh, on some of your, your shots. Uh, moving down from there, I think the next big or Vike is of course big and you get Vike midway through that's giving you two points of normal wrap it up so when when you get up to the Vike braces you can switch over to that pookie chest um, but the big thing the biggest thing probably is gonna be uh, once we get all the way to Rachna just because two points constitution two points stamina surge that's where you're really gonna start to shine which by the way for those curious this fashion is just uh Rachna pieces along with the Spio waist and then the uh bow helm so really, really nice fashion. I'm a big fan of. But yeah, that's going to be it. Tetranodon along with Izuki, along with Spio. That'll allow you to get in some decent damage in high rank and, and you know, kind of push you where you need to be uh, to really start putting together the sets. But all in all, I mean, bow is an absolutely fantastic weapon. Uh, I definitely think it's, it's you know, easy to learn but hard to master because of your positioning and hitting those, those weak points and, you know, stamina management and all that. But once you get it down, I mean, it's, it's incredibly rewarding. Um, I feel that I can get kills with the bow faster than I've been able to get kills with any weapon ever in all of the time I've spent playing Monster Hunter. So if you take the time to actually learn bow and embrace it, I think you'll be very satisfied at the end. So either way, let's jump on into a hunt. So for a hunt, we're going to be going after a Rathalos. Um, you know, just kind of a fun target to go against. Very good hit zone values, being able to dump out a ton of dragon damage into the head. Uh, and one thing I didn't mention, but this is, I guess, more relevant pre-hunt, uh, but when you are going to be going after your target, before you hunt, you should eat for something called Dongo Marksman. It's just going to increase the damage of your arrows, so definitely something that is worth getting. Uh, let's go over here, get some of this. take some dash juice and then we're gonna grab this attack guy and the fire bug
Shit. Went a little too early on that. Head is stuck underground. And that's a dead rat. So, um, yeah, if y'all watched uh, my old bow video, you might remember, uh, I think it was like a 10 minute hunt and that was a sub five. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, and I, I'm not like, I think I'm competent in bow now, but I'm not even that good. Um, you know, there are people, people that are like really good with the bow, like speedrun people. This is like a two and a half, three minute hunt for them. Um, I don't even know if I can see the, uh, yeah, 339 completion time. So, all right, that's actually pretty good. That's better than I thought it was. But yeah, I mean, point stands, bow is just an absolutely devastating weapon. Uh, and, you know, even making a couple mistakes, getting bopped early and, and eating a max potion real fast. Just the amount of damage that you can do with the bow, it's its just incredibly aggressive and devastating. So, definitely a weapon you need to spend a lot of time with, but when you do, man, is it rewarding or what? So, that's going to wrap things up here. Um, for those curious, I'm not going to be doing videos on every weapon in Rise. A couple of those weapons I did extensively back on the Switch. Uh, but the weapons I didn't play with as much, things like the bow and things such as the greatsword. Uh, I'll probably do a greatsword video after I get more familiar with that. But the bow I definitely wanted to do because, you know, I played the whole game with it and I, I think it deserved a second look. So we're wrapping this one up here. Thanks for coming on by. Drop any questions y'all have below. I'd be more than glad to answer. And other than that, I'll catch you next time.